Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, I am going to explain you about organo copper chemistry. In this, we are discussing about Gilman's reagent and its synthetic applications. This video is the continuation of previous video where we have started the discussion of the applications of Gilman's reagent. So in previous video, we have discussed about the synthetic applications of Gilman's reagent that is substitution reactions. So generally dialkyl lithium cuprate is called Gilman reagent. Gilman reagent. Since this Gilman's reagent has a nucleophile that is R minus which is a weaker nucleophile. Weak nucleophile because it is connected to copper atom which is having a less percentage of ionic character so that's why the nucleophile present in this Gilman reagent is weak nucleophile it can involve in two different type of reactions that is substitution reactions and another one is conjugative addition reactions conjugative addition reactions so in previous video we have discussed one application that is substitution reactions of alkyl halides alkyl halides that means organo halides like alkyl halides allyl halides alkenyl halides and then nucleophilic displacement of tosylates and then uh, uh, nucleophilic uh, substitution reactions of acid halides and epoxides so different kind of substitution reactions of Gilman's reagent we have discussed in the previous video. So in this video I am going to explain you about the conjugative addition reactions with the Gilman's reagent in organic synthesis. So conjugative addition, conjugative addition or conjugate addition. So this conjugate addition is an important reaction in organic synthesis for the formation of CC bond. So this is very important reaction. Conjugate addition reaction is very important reaction in the formation of CC bond reactions. CC bond in products. Since we are discussing about organometallic reagents, organometallic reagents. So when you, when you treat them with the alpha beta unsaturated systems they can undergo either 1 2 addition or 1 4 addition reactions for example if you take an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl system okay this alpha beta unsaturated system has two different type of functionalities that is this system has two electrophiles one is called hard electrophile and one more is called soft electrophile soft electrophile at beta position so this carbon which is directly connected to electronegative atom which is considered as hard electrophile and this carbon atom at the beta position considered as soft electrophile. So the nucleophile addition to this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl system can take place in two different type of manner that is 1 2 and 1 4 manner. So that is completely depends on the nucleophile which is adding to this system. We have different kind of organometallic reagents for example let us consider the regio selectivity regio selectivity in addition of different kind of organo metallic reagents for example organo lithium organo magnesium and organo copper reagent to alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds 
say for example the nucleophile RLI suppose organolithia organolithia so there are two different type of additions we can observe that is 1 2 addition and 1 4 addition since RLI organolithium the lithium has more or high percentage of ionic character so that the attached carbon or attached organelle group is acts as a strong nucleophile so that it prefers the 1 2 addition always in the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound whereas if you take organo magnesium halide this also prefers 1 2 addition reactions over the 1 4 addition reactions since this also connected to metal which is having more percent high percentage of ionic character suppose if you consider Gilman's reagent dialkyl lithium cuprate so generally this Gilman's reagent has a weaker nucleophile it always prefers the soft electrophile that means the addition of this nucleophile to alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound takes place in 1,4 manner whereas the combination of organo magnesium halide with the copper halide generally gives you 1,4 addition over the 1,2 addition so this is the comparative 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 table of the different organometallic reagents with the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl system see if you take organo lithium if you consider organo lithium and organo magnesium halides generally they prefer 1 2 addition over the 1 4 addition whereas in the case of organo copper reagent that is Gilman's reagent it prefers 1 4 addition preferably and then the combination of organo magnesium halide with the copper halide generally prefers 1 4 addition over the 1 2 addition Coming to the conjugate addition, when you will observe 1, 2 addition and when you will observe 1, 4 addition. For example, if you have an alpha beta unsaturated system, if you treat two different type of nucleophiles, two different type of nucleophiles which may undergo addition in different manner that is 1, 2 addition and 1, 4 addition. So 1, 2 addition generally gives you One two addition product, whereas one four addition gives you enolate ion. Enolate ion. So when it will give you one two addition, and when this reaction gives you one four addition. See, 1, 4 addition always, always preferably when you have a soft nucleophiles, when you have soft nucleophiles so that they attack on soft electrophiles, soft electrophiles. So when you have soft nucleophiles, generally they prefer the attack at the beta position or 1, 4 addition and gives you enolate ion or 1, 4 addition product. When you have hard nucleophiles, hard nucleophiles, so generally these hard nucleophiles attack at the hard electrophiles. Hard electrophiles. What are the soft nucleophiles generally add to the soft electrophiles? For example, they are these soft nucleophiles generally they are non-basic, non-basic. So as we know, organo lithium cuprate, which is only nucleophile that is weak nucleophile it is not a base and other examples for soft nucleophile are cyanide amine secondary amine thiols etc so these are the functionalities generally acts as a soft nucleophiles and they prefer 1 4 addition or 1 4 addition over the 1 2 addition and they preferably attack at the soft electrophiles so what are the hard nucleophiles so hard nucleophiles are generally 
they are relatively basic so relatively basic as we know organolithium organo magnesium halides hydrides hydrides these are all generally considered as hard nucleophiles since this lithium and magnesium they have high percentage of ionic character so that this connected organic part can act as nucleophile as well as they can act as base so relatively basic basic nucleophiles generally they attack at the 1 4 position sorry 1 2 position over the 1 4 position that means these hard nucleophiles generally attack at the hard electrophiles okay so this is about 1 2 addition and 1 4 addition so when 1 2 addition is preferable when the soft nucleophiles such as non basic organolithium cuprates cyanides primary amines secondary amines thiols enolates which are obtained from dicarbonyl beta dicarbonyl compounds these are all soft nucleophiles generally they prefer they preferably attack at the soft electrophiles in one four manner whereas hard nucleophiles which are basic such as organolithium organomagnesium halides hydrides these are all preferably attack at the hard electrophile in one two manner let us consider an example for example if you consider cyclohexenone cyclohexenone this cyclohexenone if you treat with the methyl magnesium bromide followed by hydrolysis you can also treat with the gilman's reagent dimethyl lithium cuprate followed by hydrolysis so as you know the methyl which is connected to copper is a soft nucleophile so that it preferably attack at the soft electrophile in one four manner so that it gives you one four addition product whereas methyl magnesium halide so generally it acts as a hard nucleophile so that it attack at the hard electrophile so it gives you one two addition product into addition product. So here, if you observe this methyl magnesium halide, why it becomes hard, hard nucleophile because the electron pair, this negative charge, is tightly attached with the or tightly uh, or closely held to the carbon atom so that is the reason it becomes hard nucleophile whereas in this dimethyl lithium cuprate here here the electron pair is shared between copper and carbon atoms so only a slight partial charge on carbon atom so that is the reason So that is the reason here this methyl acts as a soft nucleophile because the this electron pair is shared between this copper and the carbon atom whereas in this methyl magnesium bromide the electron pair or this negative charge is held closely with this carbon atom so that is the reason this methyl magnesium halide acts as hard nucleophile and this dialkylithium cuprate acts as soft nucleophile so what kind of mechanism involved in this conjugative addition reaction with the Gilman's reagent so the mechanism involved in this conjugative addition start with the complexation complexation between this cuprate and enone so it starts with the complexation between this cuprate and this enone which gives you 
a complex copper complex now the oxidative addition oxidative addition of this copper gives you enolate Here, if you observe the oxidation state of copper is 3 from copper 1. Okay, copper 1 to it becomes 3. So there is the oxidation followed by addition process takes place. Once oxidation, oxidative addition occurs, then the transfer of this nucleophile takes place. And the reductive elimination reductive elimination gives you enolate hydrolysis of this enolate gives you one four addition product enol followed by ketone so exclusively when you treat this organo copper reagent with the this is copper with the enones alpha beta unsaturated ketone the enones so first the oxidative addition followed by reductive elimination gives you one four addition product. So that means this mechanism starts with the complexation, the complexation between this cuprate and enone. So that means the D orbital of this copper first it forms a complexation with the enone. gives you a complex by oxidative addition and uh, reductive elimination gives you one four addition product predominantly what happens here the d orbital of this copper the d orbital of this copper copper involved in a complexation with the pi orbitals of enones pi orbitals of enones so that's what happens during the Mechanism. So this is all about the mechanism of 1,4 addition, 1,4 addition reaction of Gilman's reagent with the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl carbons. That is carbonyl compounds. Let us discuss about some examples of this conjugative addition with the copper reagents.
first let us take an alpha beta and saturate it carbon compound and treat with the dimethyl lithium cuprate so it gives you one four addition product predominantly but when you have a bicyclic system when you treat this with the reagent followed by hydrolysis so if you observe there are two alpha beta and such solutions that means you have two beta positions so but this addition in this substrate generally takes place in chemo selective manner chemo selective manner and the attacking of this attacking of this nucleophile weaker nucleophile always takes place at less hindered side less hindered side less hindered side and in stereo selective manner stereo selective manner so if you consider this nucleophile weaker nucleophile so generally it preferably attack at this soft electrophile and since the adsyn carbon methyl group is present in the above position so that it attacks at the less hindered side so it attacks from the bottom side so consider when you consider bicyclic systems bicyclic systems preferably preferably this gilman's reagent attack from the less hindered side so coming to the steric interactions or steric factors coming to the steric factors in this alpha beta unsaturated system for example if you have a substituted alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound where the substituent present at the beta position so if you find any substituent at the beta position then you will feel some steric interactions steric interactions when you treat with the gilmer's reagents so what we have to do at the time so the reaction or the interaction of this gilmer's reagent at this beta position is difficult when you have substituent at the beta position then what we have to do so in this case generally add trimethyl silyl chloride okay trimethyl silyl chloride which generally accelerates the conjugate addition of this copper reagents to such kind of enones which are substituted generally it activate the carbonyl group for example if you take this substrate where the substituent present at the beta position you can't directly treat with the, the grignard reagent first you treat with the no, sorry not gilman's reagent first you treat with the trimethyl silyl chloride that is gilman's reagent in presence of trimethyl silyl chloride what happens this trimethyl silyl chloride which activates this carbonyl carbon so that the reaction will be accelerated reaction will be accelerated and gives you silyl enol ethers silyl enol ether once you get your 1 4 addition product do the hydrolysis and get the enol followed by keto so that means what is the meaning so when you are free that means when you don't have any substituent or there is no substituent at the beta position you can directly treat this organo cuprate with the alpha beta unsaturated system but when you have the substrate in this beta position then you must use a trimethyl silyl chloride which will accelerate the rate of reaction by activating this carbonyl carbon so this is one kind of steric factor in another example for example if you take this 
See if you have substrate at the beta position, this substrate this substrate has two substrates at the beta position. That means beta beta disubstituted disubstituted enones. enones. So in this case, so along with the Gilmer's reagent R2 Cu Li, we have to use a Lewis acid that means combination of Argan Gilman's reagent with the BF3 is the rate generally accelerate the reaction if you have substituted the beta position. So that means what happens the combination of this Gilman and BF3 is the rate generally removes the problem of attacking this weak nucleophile at this beta position because there is a steric hindrance you are generating at the beta position where it is. Uh, attacking by the weaker nucleophile. Now what happens this BF3 iterate generally polarizes and activates this ketone activate this ketone by coordinating with this ketone oxygen. So that is the why that is the reason this Kilmer's reagent in presence of BF3 iterate attack in the beta position though it has a high sterical repulsion at this position. So, though you have substrates at this beta beta position, if you use BF3 diethylate, generally it accelerates the reaction by activating this carbonyl carbon. Of course, the same reaction, for example, if you have another substrate where it is also alpha beta unsaturated system, for example, if you treat Grignard reagent, this Grignard reagent in presence of copper halide, copper halide generally it preferably attack at the 1, 4 position so the attacking of this nucleophile takes place in one four manner and gives you one four addition product so generally Grignard reagent in the combination of copper halide okay copper halide are a mixture of manganese chloride manganese chloride and copper iodide generally gives you one four addition product predominantly this is all about the steric interactions which are present at the beta position which can be overcome by adding different kind of activating agents for example if you have beta if you have substrate at the beta position then add trimethyl silyl chloride activate this carbonyl carbon and uh, get the 1,4 addition product predominantly or if you have beta beta disubstituted alpha beta unsaturated system then add bf3 iterate and activate this carbonyl carbon by polarization and uh, obtain the 1,4 addition product. If you have Grignard reagent, add copper halide mixture of or mixture of manganese chloride and copper iodide and obtain the 1,4 addition product. So these kind of modifications of these reactions which which uh, overcome the steric factors in the reactions. Come to the alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes. This is very important. <coughs> In the case of alpha beta unsaturated, alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes, if you have on alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes, when you treat with the Gilman reagent, generally it prefers 1 2 addition product. 1 2 addition product preferably, so majorly. When you have alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes, it gives you 1 2 addition. But when you want 1 4 addition product with the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde using Gilman's reagent, for example, if you want 1 4 addition product, 1 4 addition product with the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, then you can achieve this reaction with the presence of trimethyl silyl chloride okay when you have trimethyl silyl chloride generally this gives you one four addition 
for example if you have alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde okay aldehyde treat this with the gilman's reagent in presence of trimethyl cinnamyl fluoride so generally this reaction gives you 1 4 addition product when when you have when you have this trimethyl cinnamyl fluoride for the same reaction if you carry it out in presence of just Gilman reagent followed by hydrolysis it gives you preferably 1 2 addition product 1 2 addition product so how to achieve this 1 4 addition so 1 4 addition you can achieve by adding trimethyl cellyl chloride to this Gilman reagent of this alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes and you will get 1 4 addition product Majorly. This is the case of alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes. Coming to the other system that is conjugate system of ester. Okay, alpha beta unsaturated ester. If you take alpha beta unsaturated ester, so if you have substituents at the beta position. If you have substituents at the beta position, when you treat with the Gilman reagent, treatment with the Gilman reagent generally gives you low yields. Okay, low yields. <coughs> so then what we have to do? So treat this substituted beta beta di substituted alpha beta unsaturated ester with the Gilman reagent. If you want to get or obtain good yields. So use the combination of this Gilman reagent with the BF3 etherate. So this BF3 etherate generally accelerate the reaction and gives you gives you the 1,4 addition product exclusively with the good use. So you can <coughs> you can get the 1 4 addition product with the good yields with the combination of Gilman's reagent and the BF3 iterate. Whereas the same alpha beta unsaturated ester, which is having beta beta di substituted di substituted alpha beta unsaturated esters, when you treat with argano lithium cuprates, gives you with low yields. So to obtain good yields, you can use BF3 iterate in the reaction so that you will get excellent yields in the reactions. So we are in the discussion of conjugate addition with the Gilman reagent. That means so far we are discussing about 1,4 addition reactions of arcanocuprates with the alpha beta unsaturated system. Right? Let us recall the mechanism involved in this enones. So for example, if you have alpha beta unsaturated system, when you treat with this alpha beta unsaturated system with the Gilman reagent generally it prefers the soft or beta position of this alpha beta unsaturated system and gives you enolate gives you enolate so this enolate you can so these enolates these enolates can act as a nucleophile again so these nucleophiles can be trapped by different kind of electrophiles as we know enolates are good nucleophiles so these enolates can be trapped by trapped by different electrophiles different electrophiles so that means we are now discussing about tandem 1,4 addition reaction tandem 1,4 addition reaction or we can call it as enolate enolate trapping enolate trapping this is very important what is tandem reaction tandem reaction means a reaction any organic reaction which is having a successful successful consecutive reactions that means a chemical process that comprises at least two consecutive reactions 
two consecutive reactions. For example, this is the one. See what happens first the nucleophilic addition at the beta position generates enolate, right? Enolate anion. This enolate immediately you can trap with the other electrophile and continue the continue the addition reaction. So this reaction you can observe there are consecutive or uh, yeah there are two consecutive reactions takes place in this chemical process so that is why this is called tandem 14 addition or enolate trapping enolate trapping so this is very important reaction this is very important reaction during this 14 addition reactions see for example this enolate if you carefully observe this enolate There are two nucleophiles you can observe here. Two nucleophiles. You see, there is O nucleophile, O nucleophile, and there is C nucleophile. There is C nucleophile. So the enolates produced from this conjugate additions of organic cuprates to alpha beta unsaturated system, which has two nucleophilic sites. So the first one is oxygen nucleophile, and second one is carbon nucleophile so these two nucleophiles any of these two nucleophiles can be trapped by different kind of electrophiles and get the addition products so this is called tandem 14 addition process that means you can observe two different type of reactions now that means two different type of products one is o trapped o trapping products o trapping products one more is c trapping products trapping products let us discuss one by one let us take an example cyclohexeno cyclohexeno and treat this one with the organo methane cuprate so generally it prefers one four addition one four addition and gives you <coughs> So this enolate anion again has two nucleophilic sites, one is O nucleophile and a C nucleophile. So you can trap these nucleophiles with a different kind of electrophiles. Electrophiles that means O trapping process using O trapping process or C trapping process. If you do O trapping process. You will get enone. When you do the C trapping process, you will get a ketone. So generally, O trapping. If you want to do O trapping, you will have to prefer the electrophiles like trimethyl silyl chlorides or phosphorus oxychlorides. So if you want to trap carbon nucleophile so you have to take electrophiles like rx arcanohalide aldehydes aldehydes or halogens etc so these are the electrophiles generally we use for the trapping of the O or C. If you want to trap O nucleophile, then use electrophiles like uh, trialkyl silyl chlorides or phosphorus oxychlorides. When you want to trap the C nucleophile, use generally organohalides, uh, aldehydes, or halogens as electrophiles and trap the C nucleophile. Let us take an example like suppose for example if you have cyclohexeno and treat this one with the organolithium cuprate followed by trimethyl silyl chloride and then do the workup. So as you know first 
first of this organo lithium cuprate when it add a conjugative addition it produces it produces enolate and this enolate has two nucleophilic sites oxygen nucleophile and carbon nucleophile since you have a electrophile that is silyl electrophile which trapped by the oxygen nucleophile so that means you will get O trapped O trapped product in 86 percent so this is O trapped product suppose the same alpha beta unsaturated system if you treat with the R2 Cu Li organo lithium cuprate followed by methyl iodide methyl iodide and do the work up so what happens when you treat this organo copper reagent with this alpha beta unsaturated system so generally it gives you again enolate because it attack at this soft electrophile and it gives you enolate and there are two nucleophiles you can find that is O that is oxygen nucleophile and carbon nucleophile since you have this methyl iodide which is good electrophile for C trapping C nucleophile so that you will get here a C trapped product C trapped product So this is the way you can trap the enolate by two ways that is O trapping method and the C trapping method that is depends on the electrophiles what you are using in the reaction. So the next important discussion is the stereochemistry involved in the conjugate addition. This is very very important. So stereochemistry of 1,4 addition one for addition so the factors generally controlling the stereochemistry of this conjugate additions are not well understood but you will get a mixture of isomers here but generally one isomer predominates both steric and electronic factors play a role here generally this reaction involve like michael type additions and hence product like and chain like transfer states generally you will observe during the reaction for example if you have a substituted alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound treat this with the dimethyl lithium cuprate followed by workup generally this reaction gives you two isomers two isomers but predominantly one isomer preferably produced for the other see this the first one which is trans these two methyl groups are in trans position is the major one so you will get this product the major because this reaction if you observe the mechanism It is a chair like structure where this methyl you can observe methyl 1, 2, 3, and 4, and this 5. So, fifth position you have methyl group here. So, what happens? You have methyl group in the top position. So, here the incoming nucleophile methyl can approach from this side or this side. This side or this side. Two ways it can, it can approach. But because of this steric interactions, this methyl attacking is favorable or favorable by anti-parallel attack. Anti-parallel attack. There are two attacks possible here. One is parallel attack and anti-parallel attack. So here 
permethal addition at this alpha beta and the switch system takes place by anti parallel system so that is the reason you are getting this product majorly so the stereochemistry that is steric and electronic factors also play an important role in this 1,4 addition reactions whereas let us take another example for example if you take 4 methyl cyclohexenone 4 methyl cyclohexenone treat this 4 methyl cyclohexenone with the Gilman reagent ATHF followed by workup so this one this reaction produces again the 1,4 addition product where the methyl group that means if you consider in this case the reaction proceeds via a conformation with the methyl group being pseudo axial due to axial 1 2 strain that means addition of organocuprates to enones followed by alkylation results enolates at 2 cc bonds that means you are not trapping anything now we are doing first alkylation at the fourth position let us consider that let us consider this so what happens here you are having a substrate at the fourth position fourth position so again what happens the again the attacking of the nucleophile takes place on the opposite trans to this because this way this nucleophilic approach may not be preferable because the steric hindrance steric interaction so there is a strain axial strain you can observe so instead this preferable is this attack this nucleophile attack is preferable and get the this trans product so you can consider another case that is where c trapping if you consider c trapping for example if you have a cyclohexenone cyclohexenone treat with the gilman reagent you will have evolate Now, if you treat with the methyl iodide, which is which is a C trapped electrophile, which prefers C trapping. So now, this C trapping, what happens here? You can consider this SJ form. now this is oxygen okay oxygen connected to carbon so one two and this is carbon and three so here we have alkyl argon okay so now what happens it is also following like earlier mechanism yeah this in a way I have here this double one has this double bond attack in anti parallel manner to this methyl iodide methyl iodide so it is this also prefers anti parallel So the steric factors also playing very important role here. Okay. 
what happens here the n butyl or this r group this r group because of this pseudo axial to this to avoid this angle strain anti parallel attack for stereo electronic reasons takes place here so that is the reason you are getting this is very important this r is in bottom position and methyl is above so this is the reason you are getting this trans isomer mainly in this reaction okay what happens so during this C trapping both cases see in the case of 4 methyl cyclohexanol and uh, this C trapping type both follow the same transition state in the case of C trapping first you treat this cyclohexenone with the the Gilmer's reagent get the enolate and this enolate treat with the methyl added which prefers the C trapping so this C trapping follow the anti parallel attack this enolate attack onto this electrophile in anti parallel manner and gets this anti isomer majorly this is all about the stereochemistry involved <coughs> this Gilman's reagent in conjugate addition or 1,4 addition. So in this conjugate addition we have discussed what kind of reagents generally undergo 1,2 addition what kind of reagents generally undergo 1,4 addition. So generally organolithium undergo 1,2 addition, organomagnesium halides undergo 1,2 addition, whereas Gilman reagent and organomagnesium with the copper halide combinations generally they prefer 1,4 addition. So we are discussing that is we are now in discussion of 1,4 addition with the Gilman reagent. So the 1,2 addition generally preferable by the hard nucleophiles. These hard nucleophiles generally attack at the odd electrophiles and gives you 1, 4, 1, 2 addition product and 1, 4 addition generally preferable when you have soft nucleophiles. Okay. So, the soft nucleophile present in the Gilman region preferably gives you 1, 4 addition product majorly. So, the mechanism involved in this conjugate addition is the first one is the D orbital of this copper generally forms complexation with the pi orbitals of this enone and gives you complexation so it gives you a complex followed by oxidative addition and reductive elimination gives you one four addition product majorly and when you have bicyclic systems in this bicyclic systems this nucleophile attack preferable always from the less hindered side this is very important and it is stereoselective and the steric factors also then plays very important role during the conjugate addition when you have a substituent present at this beta position so this reaction can be accelerated by adding this trimethyl silyl chloride which can activate this carbonyl carbon or carbonyl oxygen during the reaction and gives you one four addition preferably and if you have beta beta di substituted enones then you can add bf3 diethrate which is a lewis acid the combination of this uh, organolithium cuprate with the bf3 ethrate gives you 1 4 addition preferably you can also achieve this 1 4 addition by taking organomagnesium halides with the combination of copper halides and uh, when you consider alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde system treat with the Gilman's reagent generally it gives you 1 2 addition product majorly but if you want to avoid this 1 2 addition add small amount of uh, trimethyl silyl chloride and get the 1 4 addition product preferably and consider alpha beta unsaturated esters you will get 1 4 addition product with the Gilman reagent alone but with the low use but when you add Lewis acid BF3 the rate you will obtain uh, one four addition product with the major yields or high yields so you can also get the tandem one four addition okay, or enolate trapping when you uh, when the nucleophile of this Gilman reagent attack at the one four position you will get enolate ion this enolate ion has two nucleophiles that is oxygen and carbon nucleophile 
so you can trap these nuclear files by using different electro files if you use trimethyl silyl chloride and phosphorus oxychlorides generally you can do o trapping and if you have organohalides or aldehydes or halogens so generally it gives you c trapped products a stereochemistry involved in 14 addition is when you treat this uh, uh, what is called alpha beta cyclic system which is having substrate with a gilman reagent generally you will get anti isomer majorly because of the anti parallel attack preferably and the same case you can observe in the four methyl cyclo hexene on when you treat with gilman reagent of course it also gives you anti parallel attack to avoid the angle strengths the same thing you can observe in the c trapping method when you uh, when you are trapping this uh, c nucleophile with the methyl iodide it also uh, to remove this angle strain it also preferably attack from the anti parallel side and gives you anti isomer majorly this is all about the stereochemistry involved in this gilman's reagent in conjugate addition reaction let us take another example for example if you take the substituted cyclo xeno and treat with the gilman's reagent dimethyl lithium cuprate followed by benzyl bromide which is a c trapping electrophile so that means here first see because of the substrate present at the bottom side so this lip um gilman's reagent attack from the top side and gives you enolate now there are two nucleophiles you can find o nucleophile and c nucleophile this benzyl bromide what you are using here is a c trapping electrophile so this attack from the anti parallel side which is anti to this methyl so that means it attack from the bottom side now this one if you treat with the mcpba attack of for benzoic acid let me use you cyclic esters as a products so which will gives you bare vinegar oxidation products so you can also do the addition reactions with the alkynes so for example if you take alkyne alkyne and treat with the gilman reagent so generally the addition of this gilman reagent to this alkyne takes place in a similar manner always it is in same manner this nucleophile alkenyl nucleophile can be trapped by different electrophiles and get alkenes so that means once you get this syn addition syn addition of this gilman reagent to this alkyne you can trap this by different electrophiles such as nbs like in bromosuccinamide So we need this electrophiles. So electrophiles may be NBS, N-bromosuccinamide, or N-iodosuccinamide. Or cyanose and bromide. Succinamide, N bromo succinamide, R formaldehyde. So likewise, you can use different kind of electrophiles to trap this nucleophile. Okay, to trap this nucleophile and get this alkenes. Okay, 
So this is all about the so this is all about the applications of this Gilman reagent that in organic synthesis. So the majorly this Gilman reagent undergo substitution reactions and conjugate addition reactions. So the in the conjugate addition reactions with the Gilman reagent, we have to consider all this stoichiometry with respect to substituents present in the alpha beta unsaturated system. Thank you.